So if you look into the uh, workshop examples, you will see a new folder called Compute Pi Homework. And we've asked you to program uh, your kernel in a more portable way. Uh, that is what we have done here as well. So uh, for the purpose of this homework, we have actually um, stripped the functionality part and put, it, uh, put them into our own function, because what we're showing here are general patterns. So uh, the specific function for um, actually processing a point for the compute pi example is uh, here in this function. And we're now going to look at the individual kernels and how they address uh, portable and parallel programming. So the first kernel you can see here, called the Pixel Finder kernel 1.3 simplified kernel, uh, is basically just what we covered in the lecture yesterday. We spawn one thread per point, and uh, then we process the point with this thread. For, uh, however, this kernel is not really suitable for the general case, because the number of points has to match the number of threads or be a multiple of the block size. So if we want to use, uh, make this a bit more general, uh, you, uh, you have to do some bounce checking. Again, one thread processes one point, but if the number of threads is equal or larger than the number of points, or well, especially if it's larger, it will no longer crash. So uh, if we do some bounce checking, uh, shown here, the kernel won't crash on your system, as it would have uh, in the previous case if we launched more threads than we actually had points that we wanted to compute. And the next example, we have shown you how we can uh, compute multiple points per thread. This is called, uh, this mechanism here is called a grid stride loop. Uh, those of you that know CUDA, uh, we'll be familiar with this. So what's happening here is that we're just, uh, that we're spawning less threads than elements. And we're just using the grid thread extent, meaning the overall number of threads as a, um, as a loop counter. So uh, we're just uh, go, uh, processing the elements in some sort, uh, uh, basically in a window that's the size of our grid. And then there's uh, the last kernel, where we also showcase the element layer. Again, we're using uh, a grid stride approach here, but then we are also having an inner loop that uh, processes, uh, processes multiple points at once, or not at once, but uh, in sequence. And this is called loop blocking. This is useful uh, on CPUs, for example, because this enables easy SIMD optimizations for the compiler. So this is basically uh, a poor man's version of the OpenMP SIMB pragma, which you see here, just in a portable way, so that it also uh, can also run on CPUs uh, and GPUs, and uh, you don't have to address uh, annotators with an OpenMP pragma. Okay, are there any questions uh, for the homework part? Um, why do we need grid strided loops? Is it because the grid size has a limit? Um, well, we don't, strictly speaking, need it, but uh, I, I mean, the, the task has obviously multiple correct solutions. So what this homework tries to demonstrate are kind of different approaches. So the first two kernels, how the details in yesterday's lessons, uh, they demonstrate like how kind of naive approach that you just spawn as many threads overall in all blocks together as your problem size uh, suggests, right? So to process only one per thread. And the last, the second, oh, sorry, the third and fourth kernels, they demonstrate another technique where, where you write a kernel so that it will work correctly with any valid rock division. So that your rock division doesn't have to be a function of a problem size anymore if you write a kernel generically like that one. Uh, so, so it doesn't mean that the second solution is like somehow better in all cases than the first one. It's just a different. Well, different way to approach that. Um, and I mean, also, like if you look at CUDA programs that they employ both of the ways. Okay.
Okay, so just to reiterate, so like this uh, kernels that process multiple points, which says that they work even if you, for some reason, run it with like one block and one thread, they will work correctly at least, while the first two will not in that case. And what, what suits a particular application is, it, it depends on the application. 